What's going on, everybody? Another Wednesday night, another live. Keeping our streak going. People in the chat pouring in. I see you, AJ. Like your style, getting those likes out of the way early. David, Chris, Daniel, Darius, flexing those smiley emojis. Got to love that. Scott? So we're gonna, we got a few minutes before Mr. Lucas joins us tonight. He'll be joining in a little bit. He's on a tight schedule, so we're going to kind of get some uh, housekeeping stuff out of the way quick while we get going here. But we're going to be talking about, with Justin, all about changing with the conditions, how to adapt during tournaments, how to understand like when you feel like the fish are doing something you did on practice, and how to adapt. So we're going to start with Justin, and then we'll carry that conversation in after he has to go. Um, plus, we got a little bit of a giveaway tonight. We've got some stuff. We've got a new partner. You may notice if you weren't here last week that this is now in 1080. So you're getting visor hella in a little crisper HD action. So hopefully the picture and sound looks good for everybody. Thomas, you are on time. Cheers to you, bud. Copper's here. Hopefully he can settle down. Can you settle down, Copper? Here, maybe we can see Copper on the bait cam. Let's see here. Can you see Copper? There he is. Hey, Copper. There he is, Coonhound. He was the one making all the noise last night. All right, go lay down. <laughs> What's up, Justin? Thank you, Matt. Awesome. So, yes, we got a new partner for the stream. We'll talk about that later um, after we talk to Justin Lucas. Lots of things to talk about. Make sure we thank Arsenal Fishing for supporting the stream and the channel, as always. And uh, what else is new? So we had the, the Minnesota Fishing Weekend open. So where did where did everybody go for my for my Minnesota gang in the chat? Even if you're not in Minnesota, tell me where you went fishing. So hopefully everybody went fishing this weekend. Um, let me know. AJ, I feel like his co-angler story has been told many times. So with our limited amount of time tonight, we're probably not going to dive into that. But uh, he was one heck of a co-angler, and there was a lot to learn there. But... Uh, I feel like he's he's told that story quite a few times on like BTL and a few other places. Jake got on a Minnetonka. Nice. Should have been perfect. Like it was nice out, but not super nice. So there probably wasn't too much pressure boat out, things like that. Matthew, what's going on? Will. Andrew, did you get to try out that new ecstasy this weekend yet? Doug, early enough for Doug. It's not past his bedtime. Doug, you were probably out walleye fishing. Probably didn't even try to catch any bass. There you go. A little racing. Bassmaster Matt says, mostly pre-spawn independence, but a couple in the shallows. That makes sense. Pete, you got yourself some Dobbins? You know what, Pete? I might stop by the shop tomorrow. Maybe I'll make a little order for my, uh, my a reel to patch up with that rod I have. Right here, which I've been neglecting. I did. I went to Big Stone to even bring my new rod, but uh, I got a poll in the uh, on the YouTube. In uh, probably gonna order a reel and then swing by and pick it up tomorrow. So I don't know what you guys think. Which we put on the ecstasy. Eight eight inch catfish or an eight pound? An eight inch catfish on a six inch thunderhunk glide. That's something. Nice. Big Stone's a super fun lake. I don't remember exactly how you caught them, but uh, catch 20 pounds, 19, 20 pounds out there and get your uh, feelings hurt. All right. Well, maybe we can uh, talk about Dobbins if I come in tomorrow for a few minutes. More bass than walleye. Big Stone was a good time. Brad says put a metanium on it. Andrew said his XC is legit. Uh, we could look at the poll quick. Let me uh let me pull that up. Go live looking. It was pretty it was pretty close last time I checked. So uh let's see here. So we can figure this out. Justin Lucas will be joining in a few minutes. Don't worry. All right. So if you head over to the uh, the Hella Bass page, click on Community, 
we can see so it's 20 percent for the zillion only seven percent for the bantam tatula elite 15 percent. so looks like the metanium mgl is leading and then the zillion is close second what do you think pete but what should go on the ecstasy 755 Will says put the lose on it. Nathan says zillion. <laughs> Eight inch. That wasn't a typo. That's that's something else. Crossing the sea of Cortez. Cortez. Matsalan to Cabo. Still locked. Still nice. That's dedication. On vacation. Still hanging out in the live stream. That's awesome, dude. All right. Matt, you got into a couple. Yeah, are you gonna say hi? We're we gonna hang out, AJ. Darius is back to St. Clair. Tips from Micro on in St. Croix. Micro? <laughs> What's a micro attorney? Like a little mini club, like four boats, like two boats. I would probably cover water with jerk baits, kitex, tubes, uh mouths of marinas, go into marinas, rip rank, little current breaks. Yikes, that sounds extremely painful, Sycamore. Hopefully you get better soon. Um, I'm not aware of Dobbins sponsoring Bass Nation. Not that I remember. I caught my first glide bait bass on Big Stone. That'll be in a video in the practice video. Um, yes, for jigs. I pretty much like uh, Justin Shimano and Daiwa pretty evenly, to be honest. Yeah, uh, last year, I don't know if you remember, if you watched my practice video from last year, Mr. Wolf, but in Father's Day weekend, June, the frog bite was pretty good for me on stone. I would imagine that the zillion would balance out on all the seven fives about the same. <clears throat> <laughs> the steez isn't even on there, Daniel. But that would be bougie. It's right here, Seth. I haven't even thrown it yet. Probably going to go pick up a reel from Amia tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll hopefully maybe get out this weekend and throw it around. I just didn't have time to get it spooled up or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. I wouldn't know about the new Hampshire Bass Nation. All right. Looks like our guest is just about here. Dead Lake up by Detroit Lakes. Sounds good. Best braid for spinning reel. Tired of wind knots. I know a guy that knows something about spinning rods and braid. So why don't we let him weigh in on this, Nathan? What's going on, Justin? What is happening, guys? How are you? So where in the world is Justin Lucas tonight? I'm actually in downtown uh, Chattanooga. Uh, we're here our first week off in like eight weeks and i told my wife i was not gonna fish this week so hopefully you guys can hear me all right i am uh just outside our hotel and we had dinner and ice cream tonight and taking our kids to the zoo tomorrow so awesome that's our plan that sounds cool though we appreciate your time and uh so let's get into it yeah <laughs> so nathan absolutely. says best grade for spinning reel he's tired of getting the wind knots well, uh, man, that's the first question. I like it. You know, I'm a spinning reel guy. I grew up in California, uh, throwing a lot of spinning reels out there, and it's still a big part of who I am as a fisherman today. So uh, for me, it's Berkeley X5 braid. Uh, it's not maybe the most well-known braid out there, but it is phenomenal braid. And I'll be honest with you, until this line was made a few years ago, I used to use Power Pro sure. and uh, switched over to this ever since we got – had it made it's been about four years now and uh, it's just been phenomenal line i have no issues with it i really like the six pound test uh, when i'm small mouth fishing or doing some light line really light line fishing uh, but then you can go up to the eight you know if you're fishing more for large mouth and more around a little cover docks that kind of stuff but the line is phenomenal um jordan lee high vis yellow is good or the crystal which is just a white is really good. Either one of those, you can see it really well, and that's super important, you know. 
So, so from your perspective, because I, I guess I always like use like 10, 12 pound braid. Why do you like the six and eight so much? What, what are the advantages that you see to go down that low? Well, okay. So one thing to know about um, just lines in general uh, is that most of the time the American companies are going to call a fishing line. Um, they're going to call it kind of whatever the, they want. By a pound it. versus a diameter. Yep. Yeah. They're going to call it whatever they want to call it. And I'm trying to get away from the busy street over there. But um, and then Japanese companies are going to call the line for its actual break, break strength. So Berkeley six pound X5 braid is really more like a 12 or 13 pound braid because that's its actual break strength. And uh, so it's really not that light when you think about it in, okay. in those terms. And the eight pound is like a 15 or 16 pound. Um, so both of them, you know, are much more than six or eight pound. Uh, they have really thin diameter, but at the end of the day, they're, they're really strong line. And I mean, I've caught some really big small mouth and some big large mouth. And to be honest with you, I throw six, probably 90% of the time, even most of the time when I'm large mouth fishing. So, um, just a little, little school lesson there, you know, for mm -hmm. people, that, if they didn't know anything about uh how the line companies come up with their their pound test and grades and all that uh that's pretty much how it's done yeah so as far as like but you could still go up to eight or ten on the label right but like why do you like is it like for like less wind resistance doesn't get blown around as much like what kind of things do you like i guess so the light yeah the lighter line uh the advantages of that for sure number one is casting distance uh when you're talking about braid none of them have any stretch so you have you have that advantage in all of them with the fact that you're going to have uh, insane sensitivity, right, and good hookups and all of that because of no stretch. Uh, but for me, I need casting distance. That's really really important, especially this day and age, with forward facing sonar, all the pressure out there uh, on these fish on the water. Uh, one big thing for me is trying to get that bait as far away from the boat as I can, and a big advantage of that is using the lightest lightest braid that I can possibly use. Um, so that's, that's really probably my main reason for using six. Uh, I would also say that the lighter braid like that, or just lighter line in general is always going to make your bait. I got a bug flying on my shoulder. Uh, it's always going to make your bait, uh, more natural in the water, you know, less resistance on the bait in the water. Uh, it's going to get down to your depth that you're fishing faster. Uh, just, you know, I would say those are probably the top three things is, is casting, uh, natural action of the bait, and then, you know, getting down to the, to the depth quicker, you know, cause you have less resistance of, uh, th you know, the, the thinner the line, the less resistance in the water and faster it can get to the bottom. Yeah. Cool. Well, one more, uh, <laughs> braid leader line question. Then we're going to get into, well, let's talk about, cause I, one of the things I want to talk was about changing conditions, adapting in tournaments, We'll get to that one. One more thing here, because okay. I, I think this is interesting. Uh, Michael wants to know about size leader and whatnot. And I believe you kind of like are against the, uh, at least uh, used to be not an FG guy. So uh, maybe yeah, that's, I'm, you gotta, I'm you're, you're kind of on like the, the island of not FG now. So uh, maybe give yeah. some people your perspective on that. And what, what, well, what size floral and length leader and whatnot. Yeah, I would say most of the time, my the length of my leaders, uh, number one, I'm going to use. I really don't use any less than eight pound anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say the only time that I do is in extremely clear water and very, very tough conditions. A lot of times now that's more spotted bass than anything. Uh, small mouth, I'm looking for uh, small mouth bass that are feeding and they don't care if I'm using six pound versus eight pound. So if I'm using uh, fishing for large mouth or small mouth, it's always gonna be eight or 10 pound fluoro. And then anywhere based on clarity from uh, seven to 12 foot of a liter uh, is what I do uh, on fluorocarbon. And it's always fluorocarbon liter. Uh, me personally, I'm a Berkeley Trilene, 100% fluorocarbon guy. Been throwing it since 2007 and literally like trust my life, really trust my life with the braided line and the fluorocarbon we have. It's just really, really good stuff. And uh, you know, I, I just really like it. but. As far as knots go, uh, I am, I have been tying a crazy Alberto knot for, let's see, dude, I just turned 36. 
16 years now I've been tying a crazy Alberto knot and have never one time had the knot fail me, which to me is incredible. Um, and I'm talking, I tie this knot when I'm flipping. Uh, a lot of times I flip 50 pound braid, to 20 pound fluorocarbon, and I do a two to three foot leader. So you're setting the hook as hard as you possibly can with a seven and a half foot heavy rod. Um, I, I, you know, and short distances from the boat. So I do it then and I do it on all my spinning rods. And the big thing about the crazy Alberto for me is yes, it's not quite as thin as an FG knot. Uh, but the big advantage to me is that if I do hang up and break the knot or I need to retie because of fray in the line or anything like that, I can tie a crazy Alberto knot in 15 seconds. And uh, especially for us on the Bass Pro Tour, when we have our 15 minute breaks, you know, I can, if we're smallmouth fishing, I'm going to have six or seven drop shots rigged up at one time. And so for me, that's a huge advantage to be able to retie all of those. And I'll literally sometimes go through 18 total drop shot setups throughout the day, you know, basically like go through all six, retie them at the break, go through all six, retie them at the break and go through all six again by the end of the day. And uh, I just wouldn't be able to tie those knots, that many knots that fast with the FG. So I'm sticking with the crazy Alberto. I have not, I have not uh, had any reason to switch. I am not saying that that's not an amazing knot. I'm sure it is. I know a lot of guys love it and a lot of guys use it. Um, but for me, I'm just super, super confident in that crazy Alberto knot. Yeah. Don't don't fix what's not broken. <laughs> I'm I'm not going to man. I've tried to do that before and it doesn't work out in my favor. So we're yeah. just not going to do that, you know. <clears throat> All right. So one of the main things so I was doing a little bit of research and watching some of your videos on your channel and and Justin's got a pretty good YouTube channel. As busy as it is, he probably doesn't post as many videos as he wants, but the ones he puts out are, are pretty good. Um, and I was Break watching the Harris chain and you were throwing your your Berkeley spin bait and you made a yeah. comment about. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here that, you know, if, if anybody's going to be out on here on the tour fishing tournaments, and if they're going to be su consistently successful, they got to learn to forget what happened in practice or forget what happened yesterday and fish the conditions and adapt or, or something like yeah. that. Does that, yeah. that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you so know, maybe talk about the Harris chain as the first example, and then let's kind of take that theme about adapting and in, in, in tournaments and practice and sure. Sure. So the first day of that tournament, um, that's actually a good one to talk about. So the first day of the tournament, uh, I did everything that I basically tried to do in practice, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't have a great practice, go out there in the first day of the tournament, and I'm 131st place at the end of the day. And, you know, go back to where I'm staying at my buddy's house and, of course, pissed off at myself uh, just because I look at the day and I'm like, man, you just fish like crap today. Like, you, you're better than that, you know? I did not keep an open mind that day. Uh, and at the end of the day, right, right by the ramp, I uh, got into a few lily pads and I had a couple bites and they weren't big ones, but I cold out three times to get my eight and a half pounds. So that tells you how bad I really was off. Um, but it gave me, it gave me a clue like, dude, you're, you need to get in these pads and fish slow uh, tomorrow. They're spawning. You can't see them and just drag a little Berkeley general around these pads and stay close and maximize fishing time. So I do that the next day and I catch like 14 pounds right off the bat. It's like, Oh my gosh, this was so easy. It was literally right around the corner. I could have burned, you know, $2 in gas the first day and done the same thing and been in the check range. And then I, I was stuck at that 14 pounds. So I, I was thinking to myself, okay, if, if, me you know if justin's going to catch a big one how am i going to do it and for me generally it's going to be like on top water uh sight fishing down in florida we're talking but top water sight fishing or or flipping so i was thinking it's middle of march let me just find the deepest canal close to here uh that's got a lot of depth so maybe they're a later you know cool, or a warms up later maybe some late spawners pushing in there and i went to a canal um, and I'm not saying this is like, I knew this was going to happen, but I go to this canal and I get in there and I'm like, I've never been in here before, but it looked good on the map that had depth. And I liked the way it looked when I was in there. And so I started fishing around. I caught one right off the bat. Um, I was right up against these seawalls trying to look for beds and it was a little too deep. 
And there was a little mat right in front of me. Uh, not much of a mat, but I picked up a half ounce weight with the Berkeley General, flipped in there. I caught a two. I'm like, okay. So I keep going down the seawall, throw my top water, nothing, nothing. Looking for beds, nothing. Get to another mat. I'm like, might as well pitch back in there. You know, the last one I got bit. Pitch in there. I catch a 913. It's the biggest. <laughs> And, uh, you know, for me, that was a huge changing point because I just went from 131st to figuring I was probably going to be around 100th with my 14 pounds all the way up into the, I think I was like 25th that day. Sure. And then the last day, the video that you that you actually uh, saw on YouTube went out that morning. Uh, I knew I was going to start right where I caught the 14 pounds the day before because I felt like there was even more fish in there. And it was just a calm, humid, cloudy morning. And instead of flipping right away, I'm like, I know exactly what I need to be doing. Uh, and I picked up that top water and started going down the banks. Um, I'm at 10% on my battery on my phone. So sorry about that. But, uh, <laughs> we won't, we won't be going was, long. <laughs> we should have a few more minutes. But uh, anyway, I pick up that top water, man. It was just the right feeling. You know, I knew it that morning. I'm like, that is going to be the deal. I picked that up. Uh, catch 17, 12 or something, almost 18 pounds and just missed making the top 10, but went from a disastrous tournament, uh, really was going to be really bad off in the points because I was 101st at the first one. And that was the second one. Um, so it, everything was just looking really bad to just getting back to like, OK, think about this for a second. What are the conditions? How will you probably most likely get some bites? Just go do that for a little while. And uh, that morning, I was like, I know this is a top water type of morning. I go and do it, and right off the bat, catch a five, a couple threes. And then it just settles you down, and you have all the confidence in the world to stick with that. Or when you get to an, a, the right piece of cover that looks different for something else, you have time because you're settled. You're not rushed, right. you know. And you can be like, okay, I'm going to put my top water down and pick up a flipping rod, and you pitch in there and catch a good fish. Uh, it's just amazing, you know, when you can catch fish early in a day, how much it settles you and that day can, you know, kind of transpire to be a awesome day by the end of the day, you know, just by catching a few fish early. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess just, I think even more so like for, for, you know, whether you fun fish or you fish tournaments, if it's one day or you fish multi-day tournaments, right? Like just because you caught them, Friday night or Saturday morning on your weekend fishing trip one way, by the time it gets to be Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning, right. The bite can be completely different. So don't get too caught up. And likewise, if, if it's a one day tournament, don't worry about how you caught them on Thursday on Saturday, or in, if you, especially when you get to the level of the elites or the BPT or the pro circuit, right. Where it's from the time you start fishing practice, right. It's a week till the end of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. They changed so much, so much. And that's one thing I've tried to tell myself too. uh, after I missed the first two tournament or first two checks this year and I'm, you know, not fishing good, felt like I wasn't in a groove. I, you know, I thought about it to myself and I'm like, when I, when I do really well, it's slow fishing, uh, picking areas apart. So almost every tournament since then, I've had a good tournament almost. And every one of them, I'm like, first thing I do in practice is pick up a plastic bait, whether it's a Nico rig, a drop shot, shaky head, Texas rig, whatever it is. Uh, but that can be your most consistent and reliable bite, you know. So uh, cloudy days, sunny days, doesn't matter. Day in, day out, soft plastics getting bit more than anything else. Sure. So I've kind of got back to like at, at the beginning of every tournament, I'm going to try and find, it, once practice starts, try and find that soft plastic bite first. And mm -hmm. then if I can get that going and get some confidence, then I can start to expand on other things. But uh, for me, I think that's really important to start there, get a few bites, and then uh, start building practice around that. Sure. And then that's yeah. my fallback. You know, if things get yeah. tough, yeah. I, I have my couple, my drop shot or wacky rig or whatever uh, that I'm going to pick up, my confidence stuff that I just know if I need a bite, that's my that's my bite getter. Right. So that also allows you some freedom, right? Because you feel like that's that's in your back pocket. That's That's your fallback. So that 100%. you can feel like you can fish more open the rest of practice and in a tournament, no one, I can go back and throw a wacky rig on docks or a shaky head on marinas or, or whatever Absolutely. you figured out. Great, great point. Yeah. It allows me in practice to, I would say adventure a little more, you know, sure. uh, maybe look for something a little off the wall or whatever. Uh, and, and if it doesn't work and I don't find anything, I know what I'm going back to and I know what I have confidence in. Cool. Yeah. 
Any any tips or reminders? Because I feel like it's easy to say, right? Like we're talking about now to say, oh yeah, like recognize that the the the, the pressure dropped or that that's raining and it's not sunny or right or like vice versa, right? But like any tips for like <laughs> how do you get out of that rut? How what are the telltale signs or how long before without a bite? Like any rules of thumb or just tricks to like not get stuck in that rut and not find yourself at one o'clock flipping the same thing you did on Wednesday or, or you yeah, know what I mean? like, it's almost just that gut feeling, you know, it's, uh, it, it's like, you just know, I don't know if it's in your stomach or in your soul, whatever in your mind, uh, whatever you want to say, but it's like, you just know what you're doing isn't working. Like you had been doing it long enough and it's not working and it's time to switch. And generally, so for me, uh, when I start feeling that way and I'm throwing soft plastics, if it's like, if it's the thing that I want to be throwing and I'm feeling that way, uh, then I, then it worries me because, uh, then I've really got to start looking for new areas and then it becomes more about new areas. Uh, and that's when I start to get a little nervous because you can get in dead zones where right. you're just not going to catch fish, you know? And if you're looking for that new area, uh, it can, and especially fish in soft plastic, so fish in slow, it can be, it can be hard to find new stuff, uh, quickly during a tournament like that. Yeah. But, um, you know, that, that's, that would be the only time that I actually get like really worried about it. And Hey, like, I gotta be honest, like even the pros, like we get worried, you know what I'm saying? It's not like we just go out there and it, like you're saying, just, uh, Oh, just fish freely. It's so easy to say and do. Uh, it's tough for us too, you know, but when I start getting that feeling in my gut or my mind, whatever that, man, I know this isn't working. Don't be hard headed. When you start telling yourself that it's time to mix it up. And, uh, sometimes it's just as much as running to a new Creek and, you know, it might be 10 miles from where you were, but then treating that new Creek, uh, like you got to show up there and be ultra confident. Like if there's fish here, I'm going to figure them out and I'm going to catch them, you know, cause if, if you start to think that there's not fish there and start to, you know, get worried and fish fast and all that, you could fish right by them and not even know it. Sure. So any, any tips on like changing up what you're doing in your area versus moving areas? Like what are your, you got any I mean, I'll, I'll, signs yeah, or? I'll always try, you know, no, no sign specifically, but if I've had an area that's been producing, I'm going to try before I just completely leave it. There's always going to be, you know, something else I'm going to try um, to, to get some more bites in that area. Um, you know, that that's why, I mean, you, you watch any of us on the Bass Pro Tour, we've got, it feel, always feels like a million rods rigged, uh, especially on the Bass Pro Tour, because when it's a five fish limit, you can kind of take those chances at a 30 minute run for one or two fish right. or whatever. Uh, but you just can't do that. You really have to maximize fishing time on the Bass Pro Tour. So, yeah, instead of running, you know, it's okay. I got to pick up, uh, you know, maybe a chatterbait or a swim jig or whatever it is and uh, and try and figure out another way to get a few bites in this area to, you know, get through this day and on to the next, whether that's making the cut or just getting past day one and, and learn a, a little bit, hopefully, going into day two. But there's no rhyme or reason. I would say for everybody, it's different. And it, it's, you just know when you start getting that experience out there, uh, you know, all bass fishing is, is you're out there talking to yourself all day, trying to make the best educated guess as possible, every single cast, literally. And so when you start doubting yourself or second guessing what you're doing, it's time to, time to do something different. And sometimes it's good to sit down and take a one minute break and just think about it before you, you know, before you just pick something else up sometimes it's just good to sit down take a drink take a bite of, to eat of something and say all right what have i been doing what's not working you know let's try this and get it that one minute refresher you know yeah and, and you don't have the advantage of a co-angler or a, a team tournament partner to like right like throw the chatterbait while you throw the senko or throw the frog while you flip a jig right like so you that's like <laughs> that's the great thing about a lot of <laughs> dude, there's no telling how many fish we have fish passed in practice uh because of that you know what i'm yeah. saying that that extra line in the water a lot of times can be huge um and we fish past places all the time i always do it every tournament i'll fish through an area and think it's no good and then somebody makes the top 15 or top 10 you know and i see them in that area i'm like gosh i fished right over those fish and 
But when you only got one line in the water and you have two days of practice, it goes quick and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you feel like you got to get on the move and find that area where you feel comfortable and want to spend your time. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you did a pretty good job of that in your heavy hitter video, whereas you were cycling baits and all of a sudden you got on that white swim jig and things just like the light bulb went off. Do you think that was a feeding window or do you think it was really that, that swim jig that day that really was what they wanted? Or when, when I got, when I got dialed into that swim jig, it was like, Oh my gosh, this is, this is what they want. You know, it was like mm -hmm. the white one specifically, cause there was a little shad spawn in the mornings, but I never saw bluegill. There was never a bluegill anywhere. I was fishing in this place that looked like, like there should have been bluegill everywhere. And, uh, and the way that white swim jig looked in the water and the fish were suspended they weren't you weren't really catching them flipping like they were eating top water or something above their heads the light bulb just went off when i started to get bit on that i'm like oh my gosh these fish are suspended they want it near the surface they want white because there's no bluegill it was like all those things came together at once and when it does that you have a chance to win a tournament you know like i almost won that tournament and i had the bite you know i lost like a six pounder that final day uh, so I really had some great bites in that tournament. And that is one that transpired. You know, I picked that area where I was going to go, had multiple rods on the deck and just started going through, you know, I wouldn't say going through the motions, but going through my game plan of, okay, I'm going to start with this, then that. And I, I wanted to catch them on soft plastic. And even this wacky rig that I had skipped up under a tree, I had a three pounder blow up on the wacky rig right under the tree. And before it even sank down in the water and I'm, you know, and then I get bit on the swim jig after and I'm like, gosh, that, that one fish on the wacky rig told me they didn't want it sinking. You know, he hit it like a top water on the surface. So it, that just gave me even more confidence to keep that swim jig in my hand, start covering water. And that was the key is just keep rotating all those areas and cover as much water as possible. Yeah, Absolutely. Greg said it well. Hard not hard part is knowing when the line is between working it working it thoroughly and being a blockhead and just being stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, well, we're getting close. Your battery's probably almost done. Let's see if we can run through a couple yeah. of quick hitters here. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. Uh, AJ and a couple others said, "Why do you like the X5 over the X9?" Uh, so the X5 is like a. It's more like a four carrier braid. It's that rougher feel. And uh, for me on spinning, a lot of times, you know, you're using small hooks, you're, you know, in the winter, especially your hands will get cut up, you'll get little nicks and cuts in your hand. And when you're dealing with like a eight carrier or, um, you know, more, um, more carriers in a line, there's more threads, basically. So your, your fingers can start or any cut, you know, in your finger or any little uh, number two hook or one hook can get in that line and kind of wedge itself in there mm -hmm. or you know your hand a little cut in the hand can open that line up a little bit where those four carriers they're bigger strands and there's not as many uh so you don't kind of thin that line up or nick the line up at all you know and that really for me is the main reason i like it uh same thing with the tag in on the knot i cut my tag in on the crazy alberto super close but still there's a little bit there you know and I've noticed when I use those smoother lines um, that sometimes that tag in and stuff will nick into those lines, you know, and all of that. So that's really the main reason for it. And again, like you mentioned earlier, like if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, you know, and that's just one of those things that it's just working really well for me in the last several years now. Well, and I think it's a good because like a lot of people think, well, like well, nine strands, it's got to be better than five strands. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just think, like, I got more. That's got to be good, right? Right. And I like it better. I like the X9, to be honest. I like it better on a on a baitcaster, you know, and, and not on the spinning. It's backwards of what maybe some other people think. But, man, I'm I'm really confident in my spinning setup, you know, from rod, reel, line, everything. And uh, I, I just – I wouldn't switch right now to anything else no matter what, you know. There's no way. Sure. So for like frog and stuff like that, you like to go to heavy X9 or? Yeah, I like like a 50. Oh, there went the battery. It was a good run, guys. <laughs> um, well, Justin said he only had a half an hour anyways. Um, I'll reach out to him and maybe we can get him on again uh, later on this summer, early fall when the season slows down. But he's having, uh, so his battery only probably cost us maybe five minutes. But uh, he said he had a short time. Obviously, he's got his kids and family. So uh, keep the wife and the kids happy. And they're going to go to the zoo tomorrow. <laughs> so appreciate his time. 
uh justin's a pretty hard guy to track down um so we didn't get to all your uh questions but uh hopefully you guys enjoyed what we got and we'll, I'll, I'll work to get him back on another time um so we didn't we didn't get into your your drop shot size material shape uh benedetto i don't know what his color favorite color general is but i would like that baby bass general color personally so for what that's worth but let's let's continue the uh, conversation on changing up i got a couple things uh that, that made me think of um we should we'll work on getting Christie. Maybe maybe Panger could get us an inside line to Jason Christie this offseason. Maybe we'll see. Uh, yeah, for sure. Good braid lesson here. Uh, yeah, very cool. It was nice to be able to get him even for a short time. Uh, Bob's got his first uh, Minnesota Yak League tournament, Minnetonka. Should be good. Hitting it at a great time. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So now you're stuck with me. Ah, I don't have a new rig yet. There's nothing to spill. The garage is empty. Um, so one thing that we do got uh, a little bit of unboxing potentially here, a little something to give away here in a little bit. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, what braid do I like on my reels? I've got uh, whatever's been on there for about three seasons. I'm still rocking. I think it's some Sunline braid that had some like Japanese writing on it. I've got some. Sunlight, uh, let's see, I think I've got some Daiwa J braid on there. I think I've got some, I'm not that picky, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, yeah, uh, it's hard, and that, that actually like got me thinking. So, at, at this big stone tournament, uh, in practice, I was really on a bladed jig bite, specifically a thunder chicken, which I almost never throw, but it was what I had tied on the rod. and my very first skip under a dock, I caught a five pounder. So I kind of, uh, rode with it. And, uh, I, all through practice, a lot of guys were just dragging and dragging and dragging and in practice. I was just covering water with mainly a bladed jig to find the fish and mixing in a glide bait and a swim bait and, uh, a mega bass, uh, mag draft. Um, and, uh, just fish reaction baits. And it was always windy, windy, windy. And we had a little bit of partly cloud. And, and then in the tournament, things just felt different. We went through our first stretch and got one, didn't get any bites on a chatterbait. I picked up a jig and I let it soak under this dock a little longer and, uh, caught a, a keeper, but it wasn't much. It was like probably less than two pounds. Definitely not what you want. Put them in the box. And I was like, that was weird. I really had to slow down. So we fished down this stretch a little further and uh, hit this little sweet spot that we wanted to hit where there was a little bit of water running in where I caught a six pounder in practice on a bladed jig. And we had just fished through this open lift that was all by itself and, and didn't get a bite and fished iron. And so I, I turned around and flipped back in that lift again. Probably, I probably like made four casts of the bladed jig, probably flipped in there three times with my jig. Brian threw in there a few times with whatever he was throwing, didn't get a bite. And then... <clears throat> Um, threw back in there the jig one more time, let it sit, and all of a sudden, dunk. And it actually, wasn't even a thunk. It was just like got heavy and mushy, and and like, and I set the hook and got a five pounder. And I was like, hmm, this fish did that stretch. Went back through the first dock, caught a five pounder. That was our first clue that something had changed. And then uh, caught a few fish here and there. Bladed jigs popped around. Uh, we got a new area and caught a couple dinks and had a fish bump my chatterbait. And so I was like, Brian, you really got to throw that Senko. And uh, he started throwing that Senko behind me and he caught the next three fish that mattered, uh, like a high three and two high fours. And that really was a big adjustment for us to slow down and get, you know, almost where we needed to be. We still needed one more four and a half, five pound bite to really be in the contention. But if we just would have kept, throwing chatterbaits in the area at least that I was fishing where there wasn't as much wind and what the fish are doing in this area, uh, shallow. If we wouldn't have picked up that Senko, I think we would have gotten buried in that tournament. Oh, let's see here. Water temps were upper 50s, lower 60s. Uh, let's see here. 
What's going on here? Do, do, do. Somebody asked about the real. I still don't have a real. Probably going to pick up a real tomorrow from Omnia. I've had pretty good luck with the SmackDown. Some people say I don't like it. I don't know. I'm just not that picky. I like high vis for some stuff. Like my finesse stuff, I like high vis when I'm going to have a long leader. On my dock rod, I tend to go. So, like here, like on this drop shot rod here, I've got a high vis. Used to be the yellow. Now it's kind of turned white. So, it's still pretty high vis. Um, but, like on my dock rod, I like that mossy green because sometimes if the water is kind of gross or really thick cover, I'll just skip the leader. <laughs> and if I'm going to skip the leader, I like that green braid. Uh, I don't think I did, AJ. Must have missed that cheap bass post. I don't think I've ever or re, I haven't used Spiderware in a long time. Um, I would say it's probably a mix of Power Po, J Braid, Smackdown, maybe some Strike King, uh, some Sunline Braid, probably some Suffix. Haven't used the Usury. Uh, Favorite trailer for bladed jigs. Um, what I almost exclusively use now, I only got the white ones here, but is this Arsenal Tactical Minnow. And I don't typically like a boot tail, but these boot tails are so subtle that they're really not a boot tail. They're almost more like a flute. Um, I can't even show one here. We can, we can break out the bait cam. I got it hooked up tonight. But this is the three and a half inch, and I'll use this more on like my smallies setup but it's a real subtle flimsy like it doesn't have enough boot tail to really fight the chatterbait so this is more like a flattened off fluke tail and that thing dances and does a great job on a chatterbait um i like the four and a half inch one better this is more what i throw when i'm around uh smallies the smaller one but this is my main plated jig trailer and that's what i caught the majority of my fish um out in big stone Oh, so then that also got me uh, thinking about last year on Big Stone, all during practice in June, high suns, almost zero wind, and people were struggling to get bites. Like people were uh, <laughs> complaining about not getting bites. They weren't sure if they would get, and I was, I was wrecking them, like shaking fish off, getting all kinds of bites. I was skipping a frog um, up around shade lines on trees, like super skinny water. Uh, behind little weed clumps, and I was getting tons of bites. Super consistent weather, high sun. I had fished offshore, done some things, got a few fish, but that that frog bite was amazing. But I could see, and and I talked with Dan Fabiano, my partner in that tournament, is like everything was going to change in the tournament. The wind was going to blow. It was going to be cloudy. It was going to be spitting rain. And I was like, we can try the frog thing, but I think they're going to eat a chatterbait tomorrow. So I actually started the day with a chatterbait and forecast into the day, caught a four and a half pounder, and knew I had made the right choice. Later on in the afternoon, the sun popped out, caught a, a key call on a, a, a frog, and, and we got some buzzbait fish and things like that. But I like that. I could see it even before it happened that the fish were going to be doing something different. Um, I don't know, TK. I, I haven't ice fished since college. So um, you'll have to ask AJ because he's the our uh, multi-species Linder-esque resident here in the chat. But nice you could join, TK. Good to see you, bud. I've got a spunk shad. Uh, I just haven't tried them yet. Maybe. Maybe I'll, I need to borrow a yak. I just haven't. I uh, don't have one. Look at TK. Getting some love from Matthew. Um, but that is the one nice thing about team fishing is, like, you can learn some of those things, like... The guy in the front of the boat can beat that dead horse, what happened in practice, and the guy in the back of the boat can cycle baits or throw out the other side or do something different, which is nice um, to uh, to help you get out of that rut quicker. <laughs> yeah, so... I can't say what other notes I had here on uh I was gonna write some things down when Justin was talking. He got me thinking about a few things about changing. And uh 
I think sometimes you got to like think like sometimes you get into areas and like you still see the activity, right? You still see the shad flickering. You still hear the bluegills. You still see activity, but you're not getting bites. Like to me, that's like, okay, maybe I just need to change up my presentation or move around in that area. But other times you get into areas and things just feel lifeless and dead and you get it in your gut that it's just not happening there. And then I think it's time to like just fire it up. Whether you're in a kayak, you know, put the pedals down or paddle or, you know, fire up the outboard and, and get going. Um, no, I'll uh, I'll borrow a boat or fish with somebody else. Um, so I, I won't miss any tournaments. Let's see if there's any questions here. I don't know that a top water type of morning. I think sometimes it's kind of like a gut thing. Like sometimes a top water morning is glass calm. Sometimes there's a little ripple. I think it's that kind of like that feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but just sometimes you feel like, man, they're going to eat a top water. Pete said the zillion is a mean dude back earlier. So I guess what other uh, question that people have about changing conditions or things like that or examples? Um, favorite 50 degree smallmouth technique? Probably a jerk bait or a lipless crankbait would be the two things that I would do most often for 50 degree smallmouth. Kind of depends on the fishery, but. Dennis, I do know early on, like when Spiderwire first came out, I would definitely set way too hard with too light a braid and pop it. But I would probably like try to fish like 20 pound braid and then I would snap set it like I would with mono back then and it would break. But I haven't really fished Spiderwire in a long time. Yeah, probably Bluebird Skies probably means it's Senko time. Yes, we are. We actually, well, last weekend was mostly largemouth. Um, and uh, our catch and release season in Minnesota for everywhere opened up on Saturday, so we can pretty much fish anything. Uh, what topwaters do I like? My two favorite topwaters, day in and day out. I think I got them both right here because they were cut off from some other rods. If we can get them. So number one is the Yellow Magic Bone Popper. So that one is game worn right there. She's uh, a bit chewed up. Eyes are all gone off that one but this this uh this bone popper and you can use the rebel pop r or anything like that but the yellow magic i have a lot of confidence in gets a ton of bites for me so that's probably my number one favorite top water number two all tangled in a buzz bait over here and it's not the buzz bait this is going great oof all right. It's also bone. Bone's my favorite color for sure, top water. But uh, this Reaction Innovations Vixen locking bait. Those are my two favorite. Top waters. Oh look, some people have been reading ahead. They've been paying attention. Uh I think it is there, it's just they're never in stock. I have never heard about throwing a top water towards the sun. What's your favorite to if sunny and windy eight mile per hour plus in the afternoon post bond bait? <sighs> Probably a swim jig. Swim jig is deadly in the uh, post bond. Brand new Corrado for a hundred bucks. 
Nice score, John. Squeaky dolphin. I'm talking buzzbait, so I miss some buzzbait talk. I've been pretty impressed with the old uh, the Wheeler accent buzz, to be honest. Can't say that I've used an inline buzzbait like a snag of Sally. Do I fish on the same rod? Do I fish what on the same rod? Topwaters? Yeah, typically like a 703 um, Fury. Bayou Burner was blocked for five, but did I accidentally block Bayou Burner? Or did he get put in time out by somebody else? It wasn't intentional if I did. The Rico, supposedly the Rico and the Yellow Magic are very similar, almost same baits. I like the Yellow Magic. It's a little cheaper. I've just had a lot of confidence in it, but the Rico is a good bait. Yeah, the two top waters, 703 um, Fury. Like 30 pound braid to like a 17 pound mono leader. I do like the shower blows. Shower blows definitely in my rotation in my box. That's awesome, Swilly Nelson. Sweet YouTube name, by the way. Mad cred to that. That's a, a fun YouTube. But uh, glad you like those Dobbins. And the uh, law enforcement military discount is awesome. <laughs> Great advice, Sycamore. Throw the top water at the fish, not the sun. Yeah, they're hard to find. I mean, they they still suppose you, if you could, they're not hardly any easier to find, but the Tekel kick knocker is the same as the Vixen. Oh, over a hundred here on the uh, the old YouTube lives. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, actually, Patrick, I fished the Mississippi River. What was it? April twenty fourth. I uh, had a tournament, so I got a tournament video on the channel. You can check out. We did. We, we did all right. We did pretty well. But this time I actually saw it on my screen. Maybe can I like undo it here? I did it. It says Bayou Burner was timed out by Hellabass for three hundred seconds. Bayou Burner, I apologize. That was a misclick. I don't know. I don't think I can undo it. I think the chat moved and I like clicked the wrong thing. Uh, Paddle tail swim baits depends on the size, Dax. Um, if we're talking like 3.8s, 4.3s, or whatever they are, the bigger ones, I'm probably gonna throw it on like a three power bait caster rod or a four power bait caster rod. And then, uh, if it's like a 2.8 or a 3.3, um, probably gonna throw it on like a I would say a three, like a two to three power spinning rod, like a seven, maybe even a two power, probably a two power, like a. 702 or a 712 Caden or a 702 Fury or a 702 Champ or something like that. Vixen. That's a ridiculous question. <laughs> it's a good rod. Both the spinning rod and the casting rod are both good all-purpose rods. Yeah, where are you going? Did you say? Fill your first fish on the Cadence tomorrow. Going back to Independence. What's up, Ray? The Co-Champ. Swim Jig Trailer. Um, Menace Grub is one of my favorites. Especially when I'm around bluegills or when I feel like I'm fishing around bluegills or craws or things like that. If I feel like I'm on a shad bite or a minnow bite, then... Uh, uh, the skinny dipper, or the, no, the little dipper, the reaction innovations, little dipper, which is a little swim bait. Good reminder from critical gravy. Hit that thumbs up. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about, so we have a new partner for the stream. You may notice that we are in 1080. I talked about this earlier. Um, so we have uh, a new partner for the stream, which is going to do a couple things. It allows us to spend more money on the technology which brings you 1080. Uh, it's going to put more tackle in your hands as viewers. 
which is awesome and uh, gives us some more things to talk about and some content on the stream. So to me, those are all win, win, wins. Um, so the new partner. So once a month, we're going to be opening uh, a mystery tackle box pro from MTB. So this stream tonight is brought to you by MTB mystery tackle box. Uh, so it's been a while since I've had a, uh, a subscription box and we've got this lined up for the rest of the year, like once a month, middle of the month, we're going to be uh, uh, opening one of these up and talking about, it. yeah, I think for sure. Ray Cates, uh, good reminder. We should definitely have Ray on as a guest one of these days. Sorry, sorry about you, Bernard. That was a misclick. Glad you're back. Uh, that was inadvertent. So, and we're going to open this up, and then somebody on the stream is going to win this box. And then we also have another box to do other things uh, for maybe like the members and things like that. So, uh, excited to bring you guys this and uh, open this up. So, in a few minutes, we're going to open this up. Uh, and so, stick around if you want a chance to win this MTB Pro box. Thank you, Gee Fan. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks for the super chat. That's awesome. Definitely not needed. You're already a member, but appreciate the support yeah there, there, there's a lot of i mean it's hard there's so many good swim jig trailers right like trigger cross pocket cross uh speed cross menace scrubs like use your imagination like match your forage have fun do something that looks good to you uh, you're probably gonna get bit yeah we think matt robertson i'm afraid that like what if he goes whitey tidies do we want to see that thomas Hines? Uh, too early gravy too early is the is the deal out yeah the deal i feel like berkeley like i feel like berkeley their best baits though you get like attached to them and then they like discontinue them which makes me sad So do you guys uh, want to open the box now or do you want to wait a little bit? <laughs> what do you guys think? Now or later? The deal is out. Plenty of shields. Was the deal something they had and then they went away and then... Okay, so it's still out there. It's just maybe not super... Uh, who wins in that situation, Andrew? Besides Vanessa, maybe. They don't have any of the deals at Omnia. What's going on? Now. Everybody says now, now, now. What's in the box? <clears throat> Did anybody notice that Omnia has a new app? Did anybody notice that yet? They have a new app out. There's the button. So you can shop and submit lake reports and do all that stuff on your phone. And supposedly on the Omnia website and uh, on the app, they're going to be streaming it Starting tomorrow, is it just this weekend? Maybe uh, Andrew could let us know. But I don't know if it's all tournament or just the weekend. Um, on Bass, the part of the Elite Series is going to be like streamable and shoppable at the same time. Um, yeah, the code for fifty percent off this month is right there on the screen. Or it's in the description, too. It does sound like there's a few things they need to work out in the app. That's pretty typical for most apps, I think. Uh, it does help out the channel a little bit when you use the code. So I appreciate that, Mike. <laughs> All right. 
all tournament long starts tomorrow. So all four days they're going to have like, so you can watch the Bassmaster.com stream or you can go to Omni or the Omni map and there'll be a slightly different version of the stream. We'll see what it looks like. And it's supposed to be like going to be kind of a shopping stream or something. So I'll be trying to check that out. What's up, Hunter? Team Arsenal. All right, let's get this box open. So like I said, thanks to MTV for supporting this stream. There is a, so if you see something in this MTV box, that you really love, or you think you'd want one, there will be a code, and there's a discount code down in the description below. I can even figure it out here. Um, and, uh, you know, whether you want it or you want to get it as a gift or a friend or a spouse or a dad or an uncle, Father's Day gift, somebody new to fishing, I think that these can be pretty good options for somebody uh, as a gift for sure. Um, so let's, uh, let's grab our Arsenal Battle Braid Scissors. Pop the seal. What in that one time that Ike and Ellie said that MTV was the or the Ike Live was the only live mystery tackle box unboxing? Well, no longer, Ike. There are multiple streams doing live unboxes. So well, should we get the bait cam fired up? We gotta do bait cam. All right. So there's the MTV. We're opening the box. Smells like new tackle. Does anybody else love the smell of new tackle? So, first thing uh, is a Berkeley War Pig. This looks like maybe a three quarter ounce in black silver. So, you got a lipless crankbait, Berkeley, nice name brand bait, the War Pig. How many people have used the War Pig? I, I haven't. I've thrown a lot of other Berkeley baits, the Fritz sides, things like that. I have not tried the War Pig. I've heard people talk fondly of it, um, but I have not. But this is the three quarter ounce version. So I would say, you know, thumbs up on this. What's up, Jake Squad? Probably streaming around, right? Like, I think this is a solid first bait in the box. AJ says the war pig catches them. Uh, I, th I think you should submit your ticket and email and tell them that we should do a hella bass happy hour at Omnia. Everybody, follow Bassmaster Matt. Go over there and tell them they want more hella bass on Omnia. Did I miss a question from South Jersey? All right, we'll follow up on that. Yeah, so... Yeah, I think this looks good. I'd throw this. I'd be happy to get this. So let's should we line these. I can't really like. All right, let's set that one there. Next in the box is a Guggen Junior Scout. I guess it probably wouldn't be an MTB box without uh, a Catchgo Guggen type style box. So jerkbait this is a good time of year for this junior size. So this is like a one ten junior size. You've got a minnow style color here, native shad. I mean, no reason that wouldn't catch them. Guggen may or may not be your brand of choice, but it's a decent looking hard bait. Thoughts? Who's anybody caught them on the, the, the Scout Jr.? Or has anybody in this stream thrown the Scout Jr.? I honestly have not thrown a Junior Scout. I haven't heard much about him. Bayou said he'd chuck it, give it a whirl. Chunk it or chuck it? Like, Trash, or you'd give it a try in the water. All right, what else do we got in the uh, the box here? So here we got a Kalen's four inch jerk minnow. Kind of looks like a a not like a regular fluke, not a super fluke or a super super fluke, but just a regular reg traditional fluke. Um, in a bait fish color. I mean, like that looks to me like you nose hook that on a smallie fishery or a place where you got shad and that's going to catch spotted bass, smallies, large mouth, just about every, um, <laughs> uh, bait you catch. So I would say that that's a solid bait like that. You're not going to go wrong with this as a drop shot bait. Good open mind, Roger. I like that. 
Agreed. I would say uh, Kalen's is a little bit underrated. Like back in the day, uh, Kalen's grubs were my jam. Could be like the I like that for the uh, the Mini Max Chatterbait. This could be a great trailer for a Mini Max Chatterbait or one of their micros. AJ, that kind of walk's gonna get put you in timeout, like Bayou Burner. We don't no we don't we don't cuss here. We don't use the W word. Come on, AJ. The Magambo Grub was the deal. Like, so do they still make the Magambo Grub? I don't know if they do or not, but I used to put that on a five aught EWG hook and fish it weightless around docks. I'd like skip that thing under docks and fish it like a Senko or a ring fry or something like that. And I used to catch some big fish on it. And I don't know why I stopped doing that. They still make the Magambo grub. Maybe I need to make, I bet you I've got a Magambo grub somewhere in this pile of tackle in my basement. All right, let's look at another bait. So this is where I would say thumbs up on the uh, war pig, thumbs up on the Kalins. I would say, yeah, on the jerk bait. The scrub. I've laid, I've ate plenty of walleyes. Walleyes are for food only, not for sport. Oh, fleet farm. For those of you who don't have fleet farm, you down south people are missing out on the fleet farm. The man's mall. All right. Next bait, we have a uh, fish, 10,000 fish. Death Stalker. It's kind of an interesting looking bait. It's uh it's like a AJ, you'd love this. This is like a multi-species killer, probably. The uh what do they call this? Uh blanket. A, a a blade bait with a spinner on it. Maybe get it out of the uh the glare. It's a blade bait, and then the rear has a, a tail or spinner on it. So probably getting out of the season. For where most of us would fish this, unless you're maybe around schooling fish, it probably would still be pretty good. Um, but it only has one hook, which makes me a little nervous. Most blade baits have two hooks. So that would be interesting to know what the hookup is like on that. It's a pretty good looking bait uh, color wise, you know, blade baits. Yeah, I'm using the patient syndrome. Patience. Is that better? We're using the bait camera. We got we got a little bit of glare. Maybe we need to kill our uh, our TikTok light up here. Maybe we uh, kill this light. Maybe we won't get so much glare when we go up here. Let's see if this is better. Is that a little better? We still get some glare off the screen, but the bait cam never lets us down. That's my home fleet farm, Seth. Just there the other day to get some uh, dog food and some weed killer, and I also always walk through the fishing just to make sure they don't got anything sneaky on the, in the clearance bins. Yeah, it's like a tail spinner and a blade bait together. Should be a great fall bait or early spring bait. Um, <laughs> uh, never seen a walleye. They're not much to look at, but they taste pretty good. Well. Uh, I haven't had terrible luck with the big bite baits. I mean, I think they're on par as far as durability, Gators Adventure. Um, yeah, the, the baits, the hooks are definitely small. And that's pretty typical with blade baits, though. Post bomb bass. I mean, and this thing, but the thing is like this, especially if you're like, if you're in a place like where they have white bass and walleye and all kinds of this thing is going to catch just about everything that swims. I live still live in Lakeville. I'm on the Lakeville Farmington border. I've I've driven by the Monticello Fleet Farm but never been in it. I never saw those when I was there. Okay, Demiki X Blade similar. Yeah. For those that don't have fleet farms, fleet farms are very much like tractor supply, but with an outdoor sporting goods section.
All right, what else do we have in the box? So if this thing came out of its package, it's a uh, a reflex skipping jig. So it's a there's the package, three eighths ounce of magic craw. So it's an Arky style jig, and uh, a magic craw color, which I uh, I do like that. Nothing too crazy here. I like that they got a little fun. They went a little blue. They kind of mixed that green pumpkin with the blue on the head and a blue eye. That's kind of a good look. Do the fish care? I don't know. Uh, Jig Squad, are you still here? Does it, does it matter if you two-tone color paint your heads? Matching weed guard, which is good. Kind of a moderate, soft weed guard. Pretty decent. I would say maybe like a 4 aught hook. Molded uh, barb for bait barb. It's got a wire tied skirt. It's kind of a finesse skirt. It's not full. They actually trim. It almost reminds me of how like Super K does their swim jigs where they don't have the, the inside of the skirt. They just cut the tab on the one side there. So you only have the outside plumage of the skirt, not the, the double. So it's kind of a thinned out skirt, if that makes sense. But otherwise, I would say this, it's got a, a flat eye. I'd say that's probably a 60 degree. I would say that's a, a this jig looks good to me. I, I would catch a bass on that jig. I would not be afraid to throw this at all. Packaging on this reflex jig lacks a little bit with a hole in the side of it, but I'd count that jig as a win. Jig Squad says it's Jig Squad approved. Chatterbait AJ says that Horseshoe Custom does the same thing. No, that's definitely more of a a, a magic craw. Missouri craw would be, or sorry, Okeechobee craw would be like green pumpkin and blue. This is like more of a mix. It's I would definitely say it's a magic craw. We don't have any academies up here though. Derek, fourteen years old. <laughs> you don't look fourteen years old in your picture. Maybe you are. <laughs> but uh, I guess you say you're on a budget. I guess what is your budget, Derek? Uh, that would help me better understand how to uh, cater to that question. So let me know in the chat what your budget is and if it's just for the rod or is it the rod and reel and what the budget is. Yeah, it looks like it'd be a decent skipping jig. I don't know why you wouldn't. It looks like a pretty good jig. Yeah, I would say a Super Fluke is a good bladed jig trailer. Very underrated. Fluke uh, is a good uh, jig. Fifty to seventy-five dollars for a rod. Uh, my first choice would be a Dobbins Colt. I believe they're eighty bucks if you can swing that. If you can get a discount code or something like that, a Dobbins Colt. I would go for a three power, like a seven o three Colt. But otherwise, we could go look at Daniel. Read my mind. Uh, trying to think who maybe tackle warehouse has those. I don't know. Does Academy carry those? I'm trying to think who carries the Dobbins Colt. Um, yeah, the new Maverick is a hundred bucks. If you so there's a there's something like that. If you could find them in a place like you know, like if Omnia had them, which they don't, you can get them for 85 with a discount code. But if you could find someplace, a Maverick with a code or a sale, you could get it in that 80, 85 price range. Bayou Burner says Academy sells the Colts. Let's look it up quick. Up to 50% off at Academy. All right, yeah, let's uh, put this up on the screen here. Oh, what's going on? Just not like that. All right, Dobbins Colt, seventy nine ninety nine. Maybe you can find. I would imagine there's some uh, <coughs> coupon codes out there for Academy that you could find. Um. And save a few bucks. Uh, but I would get 
do they have? Let's see here. Medium, light, fast, length, quantity. They only have one. 702. I thought they would have like more options. This would be a good finesse rod. Is there only two? Or will it give me more if I... That's weird. Let's see. Otherwise, Thomas says Daiwa Arid X is a solid rod, 60 bucks, Fleet Farm. Nice. A couple people recommend that Daiwa Arid X. Yeah, so it looks like they have limited stuff online, but maybe you're local. Depends on where you live. You might be able to find that cult. Um, yeah, the Berkeley Lightning Rod for a long time has been a good rod. Um, Andrew says Omni has uh, $80 ugly stick carbons. Let's take a look at that. So these are the, the same carbons, right? Doesn't uh, Autumn use these? Out oh, 610 medium. I'd probably go with this 7 medium. If I was going to go with one, this would be a do-it-all rod right here. Of course, they're out of stock. <laughs> But yeah, there's some good options out there. Um, they might be able to. If you, if I, I did talk to Pete. He said if there's ever a Dobbins rod at Omnia that you want, you can call them up or email, and they will order it for you and get it drop shipped. So like the Sierras, they don't carry them at Omnia, but if you send them a note, they can order you one. Yeah, the used program by American Lessee is not a bad option. I've heard good things about the Colt crankbait rod. Uh, I haven't fished one myself, but I hear uh, good things about it. As well as their 734, like as a reaction bait rod, is supposed to be really good. All right, back to this. What else do we got in the box? All right, we've got some Daiichi hooks. Three yacht. Daiichi hooks, a red and a black. I've always kind of wished that they would put more hooks than this in a pack. Two hooks doesn't seem like enough for all these baits, but Daiichi makes some pretty sharp hooks. The teleprompt is blurry on your end. And then the uh, other thing, this actually looks pretty good. So we've got these uh, Biwa Warax 4-inch crowds. I think these actually look, this is uh, bait cam worthy here. I like this color. It's a green pumpkin blue. That's like definitely one of my like go-to colors. Um, and uh, But this to me, this is a, a good looking craw like almost like a combination of like a spine craw and a speed craw maybe like that bait would be something i would throw as a texas rig as a swim jig trailer as a jig trailer like that's a good looking bait i'd buy these Ooh, kind of kind of smells like power bait to be honest it very much, AJ, you would appreciate this if it'd be like, smell like home and spirit like Iowa. It smells like Berkeley. But I, I'm a fan of those. those. Those are some good looking baits. I, I would think about trying these 
non-toxic plastic, eco formula, phthalate free, the B2A scent formula, the Warax, and Okeechobee. Let's see if you can see that one. That's a good looking. Keep clean, catch, release. So it's environmentally friendly, supposedly. And I bet you it would catch them. I think, what do you guys think of these crawls? I'm, I would uh, I would fish these. Other than that, you get some literature in here. You get a, a feature on the scout, how to fish it. You get a, a slap of sorts, a sticker. And uh, you get uh, some dibble propaganda, a maze, if you want to do that. And uh, I don't know. Kind of get a little rundown of all the baits in there. I don't know. So, yeah, I'd say those crowds do look. Yeah, I think sometimes when you're watching on mobile, it defaults to a lower quality. So if you tap on that little gear, then you can turn it back up. Um, I think I saw a color here. So, yeah. I think it's a good box. I mean, solid. I would say most of that stuff I would throw in the box. What do you guys think? Like, thumbs up, thumbs down in the box, middle, something you, uh, how much of that stuff would you throw? How durable are they? We can, well, I don't want to beat them up too, Matt, because I'm going to send them to somebody here. Um, but let's just, I mean, like, I'm in there. I would say they're, I mean, these are a little thin here. So, I mean, like, that's going to be good for action. But, I mean, I don't – I mean, I would say, like, a speed crowd, it's not going to take a lot to rip an arm off that. But I would say the hook, where your where your hook goes in and the durability of the body would be pretty good. But I think it'll be propensity to lose a claw pretty easy, if that makes sense, Matt. Better late than never. You're still here in time for the giveaway, Simon. That'll happen. Mid. Mid, very mid, as the kids would say. It's mid. Derek gives it a thumbs up. Yeah. Three fish bait? <laughs> Probably. That's about right. All right. So let's uh, I see a few questions we're going to get in here, but let's tee up this box giveaway. Um, so we did give away one of these boxes to the members last week. And... Uh, we're going to give this one away on the stream tonight, and we'll be doing at least one uh, every month. So free tackle for you guys, 1080. Uh, let me uh, cue this up here. Where am I going here? Where's the... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Find it. All right. I see your questions. I'm marking them. Yeah, I, I, I a lot of times I'll keep fishing my my bait when one or two what claw missing, and sometimes I still get bites. Yeah, win, win, win. Everybody wins here. All right. Um, yeah, if you like new baits and you're looking to try new things, I think uh, there's some good stuff in that box. Um. Let's see what should be the what should we type in for the hashtag here? Uh, we'll keep it simple this week. We'll just uh, MTB. So hashtag MTB if you want to be entered um, <clears throat> in the giveaway. Let me uh, run through a couple of questions here that I saw. Do, 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 do. So yeah, so my understanding of why Omnia went to single-use codes is that there was so many people with the Omnia Premium membership that were getting free shipping, and then they were using the codes, and so they'd buy like two bags of plastic, and then they'd order again, and they'd get a thing of line, and then they'd order again, and they were always getting free shipping. So they were kind of eroding the margin. So they thought if they limited it to once per month, people would push those orders together, and then they wouldn't get hit as hard on shipping. Because instead of doing like five orders at 
fifteen dollars a piece, you'd order one time for seventy five dollars. That's their logic. So that that that's what I was told, Matthew. Um, what Fury is the most versatile? Uh, the bait caster, I would say seven thirty four. Spinning rod, I would say seven oh three. Favorite bait you bought over the winter you're most excited to fish this spring summer? Um, let's see. Um, I don't have them handy. What comes to mind? Probably the Adrenaline Craw Jr. from uh, Exone is up on my list. I'm trying to think what else I bought this spring over the winter. That one sticks out in my mind. Um, can't think of what else I bought, <laughs> but that one sticks up in my mind. The OG Tiny and the DT8. I guess those those stick out. Rod and reel line for my popper setup. I throw a 703 Fury, a bait casting rod, 30 pound braid to like a 15 to 17 pound fluoro or not fluoro mono leader. So, um, Right, like there's my leader right there. This Cajun Lightning Red at 17 pounds. That's probably what, 8, 10, 12 inches? You usually put a snap on there, but that's my setup to a 30 pound braid. All right, back to the chat here. We've got all kind of, let's see, we'll make sure we don't miss any questions as they all throw their MTB in for the giveaway. It's good to see you guys are excited. I should look up here. Let me, uh, uh, there is. DT8, Rapla DT8, new this year. So it's like a DT6 with a different lip angle. <coughs> Hopefully, we don't get an echo here. But so here is the. For those that would like to check out MTB and you think you want it, there is a link and a code. I will put that in the chat right now. It's also in the video description. There it is right there. So short leader, the only reason I'm putting a leader on the bait, and whether it's a walking bait or a popping bait, it's really the, the main reason, as I get this caught in here, is especially for walking the dog baits or when I'm doing like really short walks with my popper, is so that when that happens, right, A, the braid or the, the mono is stiffer, so it's less likely that the hooks will catch this. And if they do, it doesn't bury into the braids. A lot of times with 30, 40 pound braid, my hooks will get caught in the braid and it's a mess. So for efficiency reason, I'm just putting a very short leader on there. It's a little bit for the shock absorption. It's a little bit for the line visibility, but it's mostly so my hooks don't get tangled in the line as much. And if they do, they easily come undone and they don't hook into the braid. So that's... Um, why the red leader? It's because that's the mono that I had handy, and it's old Cajun Lightning that's like 10 years old. Snap swivel on the popper. It's one is just so I can switch it if I want to, and then I, I don't know. I just like the way the action works. I don't like tying loop knots, so rather than tying a loop knot, I just use a little decoy egg snap. Uh, it just happens to be red mono. I don't really care what mono it is. Could be big game, could be whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe. Hit me up in my DMs, Thomas. If my schedule works, I'd love to meet you at Boji. I want to make sure we're not missing any other questions. There's a lot of MTBs in there. I can uh, pin this chat 
to the YouTubes for anybody that wants to hit that link or check it out. If you uh, think that's something you'd want to get a box or if you'd want to hook some one of your friends up. Favorite reel for flipping? <coughs> uh, flipping, flipping, flipping. It's a good question. I don't know if I have a flavor. I'm trying to think what's on my rods. I mean, like, my dock rod is the Daiwa SV Tatula. We got some of those Chronic CR4s on a flipping rod, SLX XT. I don't, I don't know that I have a favorite flipping reel. It's got such a mix. I don't know. The bounty fish doesn't really get me that excited. I've seen mixed reviews on like YouTube and stuff, but doesn't mean it's not a good bait. Uh, nice, caught a few fish. Twenty-five minutes. Nice job, Derek, or Derek's son. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just saw. It. Chat jumped on me. Dixon on the Fury. Yeah, pretty much. Sometimes I'll go to like a 733, a little bit longer rod for the Vixen, but otherwise it's a 733 or a 703. Cajun's tough stuff. It's good stuff. We didn't talk about uh, fantasy yet, but we may need to touch on that. Uh, I will not be doing a Vixen giveaway, but nice try, Tony. <coughs> PB came on 20 pounds. That's all I used to fish as a kid. Big game is also awesome. I've caught a lot of fish on big game this spring because I was too lazy to trade it out from last fall. I, I used to think red line was kind of a thing, but I could really care less at this point. <clears throat> Back when I was like 14, when I was throwing uh, Cajun Mono exclusively, I thought it was something. It looks really cool on the reels. Um, yeah, I think I'm getting pretty close. I think I'm going to order one tomorrow. Guessing I'm probably going to get the Zillion. We'll see. Favorite Dobbins drop shot rod, Sobe. Did you get done cleaning your walleyes tonight? And you, you jumped on the stream. We appreciate it. Uh, my favorite drop shot rod is right here. As the uh, air conditioner kicks on in the house, creates some noise. It's the uh, HP 742. 7 foot 4, 2 power. Right there. Medium light action. Braid. Like a 12 pound braid to an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. I think I got a Tatula 4000 on there right now. But any any two power Dobbin spinning reel in your budget would be my recommendation. I'll, I mean, it could be a Fury 702, it could be a, a Champion 732, it could be a Cadence 712, uh, Savvy 702. Any of those would be really good. Hmm. Next week, like during the week, or like on a weekend, AJ. Let me know in the DM. Hit me up in the DMs. We'll if we can make it work, maybe. Yeah, agree. Seven hundred two. I think the XT is worth it. I did a whole video on that, but I think the SLX XT is absolutely worth the extra thirty dollars. So if you go back about ten videos ago, I break it down. Benedetto, uh, give you my full, but I absolutely like the XT. Braid de mono for the top water. I use <laughs> I, what is it? It's called. I'm bad at connection knots. Uh, uh, what is it? It's it's something weird. It's a funky knot. Um, it's right there. <laughs> it's not really focusing. I forget what it's called. Uh, Yucatan knot, maybe. No, I've never been to Michigan. I've been to uh, Little Bay to Knock, Big Bay to Knock, but that's the only place. And I would like to go uh, to Michigan to go fishing. Uh, it really depends on the model, Swilly. So for the, the newer Tatulas, the 4,000 feels about right to me. But like the older Jan Procyons, I thought the 3,000 was perfect. 
and then like here, this three thousand rev roast is okay. It, it really there's no standard three and four thousand, so it really depends on the model, the reel. <coughs> uh, yeah, uh, I would say a two power Dobbins is good for any open hook finesse, right? So 2.8, 3.3 Kitex, Ned rigs, drop shots. Um, what else is open head, you know, small hook, all that stuff. I would use a two power, same rod. Um, I'm trying to think what other finesse stuff falls into that category, but you know what I'm saying? That's all two power, <laughs> three power like this. 723 would be, which I just got one of these. I haven't spooled it up yet. I just got one of these Sobe Series 723s to try out. Is like my shaky head, uh, my Texas rig Senko, wacky rig. <coughs> um, things that are like just a little bit heavier. Um, I guess jigworm because I'm snapping it out of coontail and cabbage. I want a little little heavier, and I'm gonna use typically use a you know, a typically a little bigger hook, like in my wacky rig, a typically a little bigger hook in my jig worm, right? It's a little thicker, heavier hook. So I want that three power to be able to drive that home. And then any kind of shaky heads where I'm covering it with plastic or small finesse jigs, I want a three power. Look at, somebody's been watching those Sobe walleye vids. Ooh, Thursday. Maybe, just let me know what Thursday it would be. Maybe. That's the reel I have right there, Swilly. It's a nice reel. Love that reel. Need is such a strong word, Will. <laughs> uh, yeah, I caught a few fish this weekend on six-inch mag drafts, and I did get one fish on a, a Rashi Glide. Come on. Focus camera. Um... It wasn't a consistent bite. To be honest, what I was doing is I was like going around fishing the chatterbait. I hate when my focus the camera doesn't focus. Come on, back. There we go. Um, and so I would get like a bite in an area on my chatterbait. And so I wouldn't burn fish in practice. I'd switch to the, the glide bait or the mag draft to hopefully get a different bite or a bigger bite or maybe get some follows. I can't say that I was on a bite that was better than what I was on the bladed jig. But it's still something I played around with a couple different glides to kind of get the action or the fall and the rate that I wanted. But uh, still learning things I want to do more. I want to fish uh, a bit more swim baits more because it's fun. It's a super addicting bite. The, the six inch mag draft definitely got more bites than the glide bait this weekend. It was a much easier bite to get. But what was funny is I wasn't necessarily like a six inch mag draft. I was catching like two to three pounders on. I never got a, maybe got one four pounder, but I was getting more and bigger bites on a blade of jig. So I don't know if I would have thrown an eight inch mag draft, if it would have been better. <coughs> Only so we can answer that question. He never answers my call when I invite him to go fishing. Uh, yeah, you missed Justin. Justin was on a tight timeline and he had a, not a, a large amount of charge on his battery. So I had to go back and watch the replay <laughs> for your guest from Monday night, Gabe. So you'll have to do the same here. I have not tried the bait fuel. I feel like their marketing is so uh, aggressive that it makes me think of laser lure. <laughs> yeah. Answer them about the shad wrap rod. Caden, I would imagine it was a Caden 713 or Caden 712. I'm not sure for his shad wraps. Uh, we fell behind here. Did everybody get in the drawing that wanted to get in the drawing? 59 of you. So if you came in, you still want to get in, there's a chance to get in the, the drawing for that box. <clears throat> Do they still make a Dobbins 741? Because that's probably the most... Uh, let's see here. Let's, they make a Sierra 701 that's okay if you're on a budget, but I think if 
they I mean, still make the 741. I would say that's probably their seven. I don't know if they have them. <coughs> I don't, they may have them and just not have them at Omnia. Rods. Yeah, right there. If I was going to get a dedicated, <coughs> excuse me, hair jig rod would be that one. Not a budget friendly rod, but that would be my choice. It's hard to find a really good hair jig rod that meets budgets. Favorite Ned bait? I'm a Tickler Z kind of guy for uh, favorite Ned. I don't know if I got one here. I don't think I do. Uh, I did catch one on the Gloida. Yeah, six inch mag draft is when you get you throwing it a little bit, you realize that it's really like you put a big paddle tail or a big fluke on a chatter bait, and they're about the same size. No opinion on the Mondo kit. I've never looked at one, Derek. Are you guys ready to do the drawing? Last call for the drawing. Kyle says the 741 is a great rod. One and a half to three ounce. Are we talking like a like a weight? Like a heavy sinker, like where you're dragging in the current. <clears throat> Soby, you did not answer what rod, Caden rod, you were using for shad wraps in your video. He needs to know. Uh, I like the Cox juice. <laughs> Uh, sometimes before a tournament, I'll lather up my baits a little bit with like some uh, Mega Strike or some kind of goop. I'm not really bland loyal. Sometimes I think it, it can't hurt. Maybe it converts a couple bites, but I, I don't know. I like the marker pens for like making little chartreuse marks to make them look like bluegills. Um, I use wacky rigs a fair amount when they won't eat a jig. Um, I think like any kind of like. Kind of green pumpkin, watermelon, watermelon red, green pumpkin, purple, something like that. Um, <clears throat> something in that color range. The baby bass, Maxent General is a good one. But usually, and if it's dark water, like a black or a black blue. Gabe says bait fuel is legit. Heavy sinker, or heavy swim jigs. Hmm. You have a budget on that, G fan. There you go, Jake. Caden seven one two for those shad wraps. <clears throat> All right, let's do this drawing quick. Get this out of the way. Who's gonna win? Gonna win? Gonna win? Sixty two. One in sixty two chance. <clears throat> For an MTP pro back, pro box. Thanks to MTB. I thought you were gonna win, Derek. It looked like it was gonna be you, and then JP stepped in. Um. So JP, get a hold of me on Instagram or Facebook, or send me an email at rich at richlinger.com. Um, we'll get this box in the mail. Let's see here. Um, budget 200, probably like a Fury swim bait rod, maybe, or uh, try to think three ounces. Probably a Fury swim, like a 75 Fury, like Tim said. I don't, I don't know. I don't do a lot of that, so it's hard for me to say. Anytime, Justin. Um, 
I thought you had it, Derek. It looked like it was going to be you. <laughs> Congrats, JP. Um, but stick around. We're going to be doing one every month, Derek. You got just as good a shot as anybody. Thomas says there's a new Bass X rod that might fit the bill. I I feel like my Shimano uh, rain suit's getting a little uh, not as good as it used to be. So I think I'd rather win it myself, Daniel, if, if I'm going to be uh, completely honest. Cool. So open forum here. What else? What, like, I want to say, so let's say we talked about Lake Fork Fancy Fishing. Tonight is the final. Get your uh, lineups in. Uh, Greg, have a good day tomorrow. can always catch the replay on uh, the podcast or the YouTube or the Facebook or anything like that. So have a good night, Greg. Thanks for tuning in. I have not fished Vermilion River in Lakeville. I've walked around it. I've heard there's trout in there. I don't know about smallies. I know like my buddy Tyler Moore would eventually, I don't know where, but in the Farmington area, he would catch like some Browns. That you are a good hubby that you, you buy your spouse Sims bibs before you get your own. <clears throat> Bucket C you're undecided. I do have my fantasy video out. We can we can throw this up on the screen quick. So there's my Drain the Lake team. Got a bunch of Texas studs. We're going to use up Walters and Zaldane, Pipkins, Hanselman, Hartman, Gleason. There's my Drain the Lake. I think they're going to go big. I think they could be 120 pounds-ish. I think they're going to smash them. I think you're going to see it. I think Keith Combs is going to have a monster tournament. Um, then there's the, uh, Oh, for a second there, I thought my roster didn't save, but the Blaylock fighter card, Levisay Combs. It's really hard to go outside of Levisay and Combs and D and E. Um, Blaylock, I think Edo could be sneaky. If you're looking for a low percentage, I think Mullins could have a good tournament. Like, if you're looking for somebody even more off the radar, I would look at Mullins. Thanks for stopping in, Will. I have not honestly fished either one of those, the Dogma or the Sexy Dog. The Minnesota Bass, you're talking about our qualifier? It's in early August on Lahomedy Chain in Alexandria. So a couple months yet. I have not thrown the stunna. I have not bought any. Uh, I've been really leaning on the uh, the Jackal Rearrange this spring as my jerkbaited choice. Yeah, this is going to be a fun tournament to watch. Whether you watch it on Bassmaster.com or you check out the new stream feature at Omnia, um, should be good. Zeldane, Fighter, Buddy Gross, I could see being good here. Maybe Webster. He could be sneaky if you're looking for a real dark horse. I've heard the water temps around town were in the low 60s, but I haven't been out myself in the metro. We'll go crush him, Gravy. Have fun. Get you, get you some B's and G's for breakfast. Oh, that's tough. Daniel's crushing it in the top 100. <coughs> so if you didn't, a lot of people are picking Hamner. If you're not going Livesey, I think Pipkins is a good option. He's had some good, Felix is a good option here. And then uh, if you don't like Combs, Kennedy, high risk, high reward. I mean, Ike, he'd probably do all right. Skylar Hamilton's been pretty consistent. Bunch of top 30s there. Justin Atkins, offshore fisherman. Gleason. Josh Douglas seems to catch him in Texas, especially in slugfests. Some decent options. Um, <clears throat> The... 
it's kind of a mixed thing. So people say is like if you pick all chalk and you just pick the favorites, you're not going to make up any ground. But at the same time, if you pick low percentage people and they do bad, then everybody passes you. So there is a bit of a risk reward. It's kind of like <clears throat> the long shot, but it's still just the total points. At the end, you still just need to get the top point guy in each bucket. It doesn't matter if they're the top percentage guy or the bottom percentage guy. It's about picking the right person. <clears throat> Where the risk is, is if you go low percentage and you go wrong and you go 2% and he bombs, that means 98% of the people probably got more points than you. Um, so it's probably a little safer to mix in shock and not go low percentage in every bucket and just choose where you go low percentage and not go all low percentage. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you would think Welcher, I just don't know if this, I think the shallow bite's going to be dwindling. I think he'll do okay, but I don't see him being a, a day four guy, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> Always here to entertain Mr. Mike Christian. <clears throat> You two cuz up in the mix in the DTL. Drain the lake. Um, I don't know. <clears throat> I just don't think he's had many top tens this year. I think that's why. I bet you he's on day day one coverage this week. Yeah, I Welcher was one of my like Guys I used all season last year and not so much this year. Ribbon tail worms, probably the Berkeley seven inch power tail power worm. The number one ribbon tail. <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> Where are we at here? What time is it? It's uh nine fit. We're going on two hours. So any other questions? Let's uh, probably go maybe five, ten more minutes here for the, the OGs going late here. And uh, it was fun. We'll have to get uh, Justin back on when he's got a, uh, more time and a, a full phone. You know, he has been he got off to a rough start, Seth, in Florida, but he's been on the climb. He had like a bad St. John's tournament, a decent Harris chain, and he's kind of been on the climb. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, he's up to bucket B. I think he's making a steady climb. I look for him to have a good tournament at Fork, and I think by the time we get uh, past Pickwick, he'll probably be in bucket A for the Northern Swing. Good night, Thomas. Have a good one. I'll be wrapping it up not too late. I'm actually going to go in the office tomorrow, so I don't know about that. I don't know, Daniel. It's been working for you so far. So, you know, trust your gut. But I'm going to try to get another video this weekend. Did some flat side cranking on the Mississippi River last week, and then at least two videos next week. Practice Big Stone in the tournament for Big Stone, which going to see some bigs caught. We've already got some six pounders in the boat this year, <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be tough focusing on work with Lake Fork alive on the background. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Another Wednesday night. I don't think I have a guest lined up for next week, um, but we'll get something lined up, I think, on the schedule. And uh, if you guys came in late, check the replay. Justin Lucas was on in the first, like, 30, 40 minutes. Uh, you can catch the replay on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're watching. I think we're out on Twitch and Twitter as well. Thanks, everybody. And uh, otherwise, you can listen to it on your favorite podcast app, Hella Bass. Um, Thanks to Arsenal and Omnia for supporting the stream as well as MTB this week. And uh, as always, here to help you guys catch more big bass and suck less. <laughs>